Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Flash episode 12 video. Careful for spoilers if you haven't seen it yet. So much Wally Berry training montage, teasing all kinds of Killer Frost stuff, and the Gorilla City episode two-parter that's coming up. So there's a new round of the Flash Ring giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. Be sure to click that bell to enable alerts so you don't miss anything. So I'll explain what's going on with the Gorilla City two-parter at the end of this because there's going to be a break. There's no new Flash next week. The Gorilla City episode starts in two weeks. So top 10, WTF, comic book easter eggs, there was so much stuff going on in this episode. And the villain was from the comics. So number 10, The Flash vs. Kid Flash foot race. They totally play up Kid Flash's overconfidence. It's all in good fun. He's just like really excited to be working with Barry and Barry's naturally trying to teach him some tricks. It's a whole way of them showing you that Wally is naturally very talented. He is amazing at straight line speed but that is so Flash season one. The problems that they face, the villains that they face are so much more complex than the initial couple of episodes that we saw way back in season one. Now the game has been upped big time so Wally is going to have to learn some more nuanced Flash tricks and there's all kinds of abilities. They tease this for Cisco's character too. All kinds of abilities that you couldn't even imagine that they haven't figured out yet. The Speed Force can do crazy things and each speedster has their own type of abilities that they learn just based on the way that their brain works. So no two speedsters are created alike. Some of them have abilities that others don't have. So naturally, Barry gets Wally with the phasing. That was one of the hardest things for Barry to learn, but it was the reverse flash's signature takedown move, just phasing his hand right through someone's chest. Number nine was all the funny betting that everyone was doing while they were racing. We learned more funny facts about Earth-19. Betting was banned after an incident with Vice President Al Capone, Abe Lincoln's on the $100 bill, not Benjamin Franklin, and Cisco finds a couple more opportunities to name drop Gypsy, just letting you know that he hasn't forgotten about her and she's probably coming back on the show before the end of the season. But number eight, enter the villain. So this is Clive Yorkin. He's a character from the comics. The way they took him down is a little bit different. What they ended up doing is having to just bury him underground so that he couldn't touch anybody else. So this solution was a little bit more sophisticated, phasing blood through him. Part of his storyline was in making Julian feel guilty about being the person to create him using the Philosopher's Stone. I'm responsible. I did this when I was Dr. Alchemy. And then later, something to remember for a future episode that's really important. There's one more metahuman husk out there somewhere that they have to track down. He tried to do it by himself, but the whole theme of the episode was working together, meaning that things will probably go really badly if he tries to do that by himself. So just remember that for the future. But the big thing is Luigi's restaurant. It's part of the board of Iris's death of things that they're trying to change. Iris is freaking out because not everything is being wiped off the board. So it's just a way to show you that even though they are able to change some things in the future, they won't be able to change every single thing. So that'll come back around at the end of the video when I talk about some of my bigger WTFs like Killer Frost and Dr. Alchemy. So just remember that not everything is going to be undone. There'll still be some bad things happening to people. The prophecy will still come true, Savitar's prophecy, but it'll be a little bit different. Number seven was Cecile's daughter just being really awkward and funny, making Joe pick between Wally and Barry. Who's the better one? You know, who's the real hero? Don't do it. It's a trap. So there were a couple times in the episode where they made it seem like Kid Flash was getting all the glory and people were forgetting about how awesome Barry is. But then there were some moments at the end that took that back. So they balanced the scales a little bit. They just want to show you that there are people that are really jazzed up about Kid Flash, but they haven't forgotten about Barry. Barry is still the main attraction. Kid Flash still has a lot to learn, but I was expecting some big twist with Cecile's daughter, but it turns out that she's just like a normal kid. But they did say that she'd be coming back in a month, meaning that's like a couple more episodes so she'll be back before the end of the season. Number six is all the Julian Caitlin CSI scenes early on the episode where he's just a total douche to her. So I love all these scenes. I think we've seen more of Caitlin doing actual CSI biology work which is her chosen profession. She's a biologist. We've seen her do more of that in the last couple of episodes than in any previous season. So one of the things they do each new season is because they're still in Star Labs they try to do new sets. So like the medical lab looks very different from previous seasons. So whatever ends up happening at the end of the season, going into season four, we're still at Star Labs. They'll have different sets, but we'll still have some of the old favorites too. Like they'll still have the portal room to Earth 2. They'll probably keep the speed lab, but there'll be some other places inside Star Labs that we haven't been before. 
Number five, Barry is having trouble training Wally. He just keeps running into the board, bouncing off, trying to phase. It's not working. Barry wonders what Eobard Thawne did to train him. And I love the crack that Cisco made. He says, oh, he held about 15 years to plan how he was going to train you. Just reminding you that that version of Wells had to wait that long for Barry to get his powers so that he could train him to use his power to get himself back to the future. But they did a good job in the episode of showing you some of Wally's frustration, like he's really good at straight line speed, not really great with the more nuanced skills, but he is smart enough to understand quantum theory when they have to vibe into a flashpoint universe. So what you have here is Barry learning to be a teacher, Jay Garrick style. He needs to be an inspiration to the people he's teaching, not just somebody who gives them assignments to complete. Everybody's had a teacher like that. Just give me the homework. And then you have other teachers who are amazing because they inspire you to be better. So there's going to be a lot more of this the rest of this season and in all the future seasons if we ever get more speedsters. Like I know a lot of people want to see Bart. Barry's going to have to be able to be the Jay Garrick to other speedsters the way that Jay Garrick helps him. So number four is vibing a Flashpoint universe. So you have to keep in mind that they're not vibing what Flashpoint was. There's an infinite number of universes out there. A lot of you have asked me that question. So in the Flash TV show, there are infinite universes. So they vibe one where Barry did not undo Flashpoint just to find out who the last person Clive Yorkin is going after. So they find her and they track her down. But I just love the idea, you know, Cisco's teasing abilities that he doesn't have yet. Gypsy's saying that he has all these things that he doesn't even know that he can do yet. So he's actually one of the most powerful metahumans on the planet. He just doesn't know it yet. He could actually vibe the planet apart. That's how powerful he is. He can cut speedsters off from the speed force, meaning he could turn their powers off. And he has terrakinesis, meaning he can move the earth around telekinetically. But the other smaller one that's a little more useful is that he can also become undetectable to security cameras. So there are all kinds of abilities that they can roll out in future seasons. Maybe because he has the costume and the gauntlets now, we'll see another new Cisco power before the end of the season. But I almost forgot, when he vibes that other Flashpoint universe, Alex Desert, Julio Mendez, is still alive. Because remember, he was the police captain during Flashpoint. He was from the original 1990s Flash series. He was their version of Cisco on that TV show. So it's always fun to see him come back. I saw a bunch of you were bummed out when they killed him off during the episode. But there's so many ways they can bring him back. He can come back during flashbacks from alternate universes like he did in this episode. So he can still come guest star on the TV show. But it's always fun to see those older characters come on the modern TV show. Number three is Julian talking Caitlyn down from Killer Frost before she just lets Iris die. So the whole thing with Caitlyn here is that it's like this really nuanced use of her powers. You notice that that was the thing in the episode, teaching Wally to use his powers in a really nuanced way. Caitlyn learning to use her powers with a lot more control. That'll be useful when they try to fight Savitar at the end of the season. So Caitlyn starts to go more and more Killer Frost because Iris is getting worse and worse. So she starts speaking with her voice. Julian has to undouchify himself and talk her down, which circling back around to the Flash prophecy about what I said earlier, Julian feels like he's weak. He wasn't able to fight Savitar's control. But then later at the end of the episode, she invites him out for drinks. She tries to tell him that, hey, you're not weak. So it seems like they're kind of a pair now. But what might end up happening before the end of the season is that they both end up going bad and running off together, which is just a funny thought. I don't think they're going anywhere, but I do think that we're going to see full-blown Killer Frost again before the end of the season, and Dr. Alchemy will have something to do with Savitar coming back into the real world. So just because it seems like they did really good in this episode doesn't mean like they won't go off the deep end again before the end of the season. So number two was the big train save. You have a big win for Kid Flash phasing his blood into Clive York and, and Barry phasing the train. Just another Flash power that you didn't know that he had, which is actually something that they borrowed from the New 52 comics of the Flash run. Except the only difference is that he phased an airplane, but it's the exact same thing where he phases this giant craft of people. So there'll be all kinds of things that they do in future seasons like this. Cisco learning new powers, the Flash learning new powers, Jay Garrick is really where that comes in. Barry is really scientific, but a lot of times you just have to watch somebody else do something. So Jay Garrick, Jesse Quick, there'll be other speedsters that they run into that, you know, just because they think differently, they've thought of a different use for the speed force. So they'll teach that to Barry, Wally, 
everybody will work together because that was the big theme of the episode. Joe had that big speech at the end where he said, we're all going to have to up our game. Each of the people who had a big win in the episode only did so because they had help from someone else. Like Wally only knew what to do because Barry told him what to do. Caitlin was only able to help Iris because Julian helped her. So that's a really important clue for how they're going to save Iris and defeat Savitar together, which I feel like everybody knew. But sometimes you just need the characters to actually say that to foreshadow like, hey, we're actually going to have to do this together. No one person is going to be able to save Iris on their own. It's going to have to be all of us working together. And I know really ominous, Joe at the end was asking Barry about the Savitar prophecy. Is she the one that's going to die? And Barry nods his head yes. That is not necessarily true. They can change the future, but I don't think that they're going to change Savitar's prophecy. Someone will still die. Someone will still suffer a fate worse than death, etc. So more and more, I'm thinking that either Julian or HR are going to be the ones to die because they're sort of the odd men out on the team that are redeeming themselves. Like Julian is having this big arc where he used to be this terrible person doing terrible things for Savitar. Now he's turning into a good person. Boom, yank the rug right out from under you. And HR is trying to do the same thing. Make his life have meaning. Once he achieves that, what would be the most WTF thing you could do? You kill him off. So they are the two people that are at the top of my death list this season. But my number one WTF is obviously the Gorilla Grodd teaser at the end. Wally is so happy that he phases and boom, out pops Jesse Quick. My father's been captured and taken to Gorilla City. Just to explain the Gorilla City episode, it's going to be a two-parter. It's just like last year where they did the two-part Earth 2 episode, so we'll probably see some familiar characters, but it'll be all about Gorilla City. So it won't start for another two weeks. So the Flash is on break next week. I'll still do bonus videos like I normally would, but let me know in the comments. What are you most excited about, and what do you think the next new power that they're going to demonstrate is? Cisco needs a new power, and Barry and Wally need new powers too. Like, what do you think the next thing they're going to do is? The next video I post will be the trailer for that Gorilla City episode. I'll explain a little bit more about Gorilla City in the comics and what's going on with Solovar because they're introducing that character. Then I'll post my Legends of Tomorrow episode video. But congratulations to the new Flash Ring giveaway winner. It's Albie. Please private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. There was a new round that started in this video. I'll announce the winner when I post that Flash trailer video in the morning. So get hyped. It's going to be so awesome. While you wait for that, you can click here for the Iron Fist trailer, and you can click here to learn what the different colors of flash lightning mean. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you in the next video.